tonight. Yeah, just quickly go through. It has nothing to do with robots. Um, oh. probably doesn't need the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. However, are you sure you're going to adjust the level down? <laughs> right. Now, I've got a few uh, Raspberry Pis, and eventually, of course, you break the SD card, and you have to start again, and you think it might be a good idea to start with a clean image. But every time I get one, there's two things I install. One, I put Samba on it, because I, I, you know, I want to just be able to cut and paste and drop files down from my PC, download them to the PC, and then just drop them in the Pi. And ages ago now, August the 9th, uh, see, so used to touch, so used to touch screen. <laughs> um, You're used to schools. Schools, yeah. So basically, you'd, what, what, you want someone to just do this once. It's, it's not rocket science, it's just a lot of typing. And a guy who originally was trying to get Wi-Fi working on the Pi, he, um, <coughs> he basically just scripted all the steps he did. So I just copied his idea, and I scripted all the steps you did to get a Samba set up. So all you do is you download that, you do that, answer the questions, and you've got Samba up and running, and that's it. So you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to think, you just do it, and then your Raspberry Pi is just another machine on your network at home, and you can copy and paste files to it, which is a lot easier sometimes, than, especially if you don't know anything about Linux, uh, going in and sudo this and nano that and, you know, whatever, the rest. So that's on the blog thing there, uh, it's where, where it go. The other thing I do in talk of is I also install X11 VNC. Uh, which I follow on the forums, I didn't write that, and I just put X11 VNC, and that's just the same there for when you're remoting as if you were on the screen. If you're watching the screen at the same time on a monitor, it's the same screen, which is different from some of the other VNC versions. So I put those on, and in 15 minutes I've now got a remote controlled um, system, because your ReadyMac 7811, 7811 is it? Yeah. You plug that in and your Pi knows all about them now, so you just plug one of those in. Um, and you're in business. You do have to go on Ethernet the first time, you know, but once you once you pass that stage, 15 minutes later you're up in Wi-Fi. So if you're a bit worried about it, you think, oh, I could do with Samba, there's how I did it. Uh, other software things... Simon, did you... Sorry? I wasn't paying attention. Did you explain what Samba is and where somebody might want to put it? Did, did you already do that? Okay, quickly. Oh. On, a, on a Linux machine, uh, basically, the, the protocol used on Windows, Windows networks, and let's not get into it, is called SMB, and therefore, years and years ago, some guy said, hey, hang on, we want this on our Linux machines as well, so we can talk to them across the network. So they sort of reverse engineered the Microsoft protocol, so it just looks like a Windows machine. And our SMB, it came out of that, called it Samba instead. So that's what that is, to allow you to treat your Raspberry Pi <laughs> as a Windows machine on your network, copy and paste files to it. Is that enough? Share a folder. Share a folder. So would it be to help you set up a server, turn your Raspberry Pi? No, just some copying file. So once you've done this, yeah. you don't have to go typing on a keyboard on your Raspberry Pi oh. to copy files to and from it. You can adjust your configuration files. You can copy scratch projects, download them on your PC, just paste them across. Because browsing on a Raspberry Pi is, is painful. So you, you don't want to be you don't want to be downloading stuff on a Raspberry Pi. Download your PC, put it inside your Pi. It's um, much quicker process when you're playing away. Um, something else that I've always wanted when the Pi came out, in schools, as a network manager in schools, all my PCs in my classrooms have a list of information that's on the screen saying what their IP address is, what their MAC address is, what their name would be, and this wasn't available for the Raspberry Pi. Um, but luckily, there's a guy who's done the original BG Info was written by the Sys Internals guys yonks ago when they used to produce all the good stuff for Windows PCs and then Microsoft hired them. Uh, but there wasn't a version for Linux. Another guy's taken up the uh, mantle here and produced a version for Linux. And they said, I could do that. He says, but I don't have a Pi. Where are you? I'm in Barcelona, he says. Okay, I can't really nip out there with a Pi. So he, for the last two months, between the hours of 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock, says, Simon, type sudo this, type nano that, edit this, edit that. And he, he just sends me a new version, and we keep trying to run it, and run it, and run it, and last weekend, we got to that now. 
So if you've got either a lot of pies or you like seeing stuff, you can run this program and it will write on the wallpaper telling you all the stuff going on. Which is quite handy if you're into technical stuff and you want to know your MAC addresses, your free memory, how much, you know, what's going on. Like I say, I use it all the time in schools and network managers so I can walk up to a PC and see what it is. Um, and I just wanted this for a pie. Now he's gone one step further talking about what you're doing about remote accessions, which just goes over my head. He can make this signal back to a desktop PC. If, you had a, if your desktop PC was a fixed IP address, it can send this information back over to a window on your PC so the Pi can tell you what it thinks its IP address is and everything. But that relies on the receiving PC having a fixed IP address at the moment. So we're just at the stage of trying to fine tune this so we can just send it out and say this, here's the install script like the simple Samba one. Um, but it's going to be available shortly. But this guy has the patience of a saint, as you can imagine. He's trying to get me to do things over the internet. You know? And I've not fallen out once yet, which is a new world record, in fact. So anyway, that's coming along shortly. And then finally, nothing at all to do with software, batteries. I'm always on the hunt for batteries. Now, originally, uh, used to get a battery that was about that sort of size. It cost $12.99. Um, from PC World on special offer. A lithium ion battery that would power a Pi was costing about £20. And obviously, if you know me, I don't like spending money on my Pies. I'm trying to do things as cheap as chips. Um, following on from here, last time when I got my stepper motor bot, went down to Manchester Raspberry Jam, talking away, and a guy and I went, hmm, he's, I think I've spotted something on a scan website. And these, which are exactly this, pretty much the same as my 12.99, were um, it was, well, I could buy five for £14.50 from Scan. That was on a today only special offer, but even on a bad day, they're less than £5. So it's 2200 milliamp, um, it'll power the Pi for two hours if you're just sitting there doing desktop stuff. It'll actually power mine as a robot for about 35 minutes before it pegs out. So one of those will power a little Raspberry Pi bot, possibly not a big one, the big motors, but with the stepper motors. Um, it's just like, you know, if you've got a Pi, why wouldn't you buy one? Comes with a lead, so you can charge it up one way, and you're in business. Now, one little thing about batteries, if you power a Pi through the micro USB port, you go through what's called the polyfuse, which is like, I don't want to even describe what the polyfuse is, but as soon as you start to draw some serious current, I guarantee you that polyfuse will kick in and drop the voltage and your Pi will switch off. If you don't do anything with your Pi, or don't make a mistake, you'll be all right. But when you want to power a Pi properly, you've either got to power it straight to the GPIO pins, or if you can get these, female to male USBs, plug them in, and that means you can power, you use a battery, or you're using a normal power supply, and then power through the front end of your Pi, down on the extra USB ports, which don't go through the polyfuses. So this is a much saner way for, for a, a normal person to get, you know, all the current at the right voltage into their Pi without playing with, you know, you can buy all that. Put my USB hub into the Pi with it out of it. Yeah, if you put a USB hub, then you usually the power's through. Yes, Martin? Oh, you've just had a question. Yes. On the live stream. On the live stream. Yeah. Hello. The, the BG info. Oh, BG info, yes. Uh, is there a script available for it? It's, 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 we're just getting it there. This, this, this was produced on Saturday. We're on the live stream. Yeah, hello, yes. <laughs> we're very shortly. In the next week, we should get that going. Um, That's Simon's Twitter handle in, at Simple Sci. Yes, at Simple Sci. But uh, we, the guy wanted to get it all sorted out first before he goes public with it. But it, it, it will still be tweaking, but it'll be, at least it should work. And then people will come up and ask all sorts of suggestions uh, as to what they want to do with it. Did you bypass the polyfuse for your power? Going back to the batteries, yes. Could you damage your power? Yes. People might want to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can damage it going through the polyfuse. Yeah, it's 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 six and two threes. You know, it's. Uh, but if you go, you, you get into stuff. This will. If you're not playing with the GPIO pins, then you're not going to damage it anyway. And this will make sure. Just putting that through the front means you get a true five volts. So a lot of uh, power supplies will do 
nearly five volts. So by the time you've gone through that polyfuse and time it's dropped it down a bit, you're not getting much voltage and your pie folds over occasionally. And I think it's been pretty much concluded that it's poor power that causes pies to crash. If you go with a good solid five volts, it'll work all the time. Except if you're, you know, doing anything. Yes? They're called forward. So from Scan Electronics, which are a Bolton, you know? Yeah, yeah, the Reebok. I mean, somebody said to buy one, it would cost about four quid on postal packaging, but I'll pass it twice a week. So if you want to give us a shout, I'll pick you one up and just put it in the post for you. I have no problem with that one. But as I did this and said that was a perfect battery, of course, somebody on the forums, they came up with something else from China. So this is, you know, stick two AA cells in there, and that will give you a USB 5 volts out. And uh, he said it'll power his Pi for two or three hours. I've just, mine just arrived. If you order from China, it just takes a month for it to come, doesn't it? So this thing's arrived. So that's very good because you can just stick two dry cells in there and it doesn't matter if you're charging. And it comes as a little torch as well. So that's very useful. And um, there is a video on YouTube where somebody shows how with for 20 or 30 pence you can, and two AA cells, you can power your Raspberry Pi. The, the two batteries fit very neatly between the USB and the little um, ribbon. Yes, but I imagine they're not for what I call, you know, no. No, or, or normal people. Yeah. Whereas these are commercially available devices that you can buy. Uh, I had a search for this one, but there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an online price site like Amazon called Focal Point, and that seems to be the one where I have any, any USB to any other USB flavor that you'd like. Okay then, thank you very much.